My name is Mike Reed from Red Mac Pop-Up Studio and this film is going to tell you about the size of elements of structure. So once you're in practice and working on a project you'll have a structural engineer advising you on the sizes of pieces of structure but whilst you're a student and when you're working on projects before the structural engineer is involved you want to have in your head some guidance on depths of beams and slabs and trusses. So I'm drawing a section here, two walls supporting a beam, the beam is loaded and the walls are exerting a force upwards to counteract that downward force of the loaded beam. Under load and in an exaggerated fashion the beam will distort. Not as much as I'm showing here, but this gives you the idea of what happens to the beam under that loading. And one of the tools that a structural engineer will use to prevent that distortion, that bending being too great, is to ensure that the span depth ratio is adequate. We're talking about a beam here and the span depth ratio of a beam is roughly 1 over 20. This is for any type of beam material and common loadings that you will come across in building design. So this beam could be timber with plain sides, timber with rough cut sides, concrete beam, steel beam, rectangular hollow section which is again steel or cold rolled section so for any of these beams under ordinary loads in your building the span depth ratio of 1 over 20 will work this now enables you to design all of your buildings throughout your life as an architectural student with roughly the correct beam depth. Those were beams. Now I'm going to draw slab type materials. So this one is a precast concrete slab made in sections from here to here. The slab could be concrete This one is plywood. So these slab type materials will look the same in section, 
they'll distort in the same fashion but the span depth ratio will be different so these are all slabs and for their depth they will span a little bit further they'll span a thirtieth as opposed to a twentieth for a beam So some examples of these two principles is a domestic one, a pair of floor joists with plywood or timber floorboards, a typical joist centre is 600 millimeters which will be roughly 550 between them d over 550 for a slab type material like plywood or a floorboard so 30th and therefore D equals 18 millimetres. That's a slab type material. Here's a beam type material. Two walls with a beam spanning between them. say the span is 2 meters, 2,000 millimeters span depth ratio of a beam is a twentieth therefore D equals 100 millimeters an important thing about what I said about the support of this beam is that it is simply supported. That beam in structural terms is effectively sitting on the wall. If you were to rigidly connect that beam to the wall or to the column, the beam would distort in a slightly different way So where that joint is rigid, the end of the beam is retained vertically. In this beam, which is simply supported, the end of the beam is not restrained and it can rotate. The effective span of this beam is reduced by about a half. This is the point of contraflexure where the beam is changing from curving with a radius, center point of radius down here. This is a way of reducing that depth should you need to, making the joints in your structure rigid, reduces the effective span, makes less material span a greater distance. Thank you for watching.